Science Uncovered. My name is Imogen. And I'm Hannah. And today's episode is all about synesthesia. Our experience of the world around us is created by our senses. We combine information received by our sensory organs to create a multi-sensory perception of our surroundings. However, what we perceive is not always the same as what's really there. This means that different people sometimes perceive things very differently. So people with synesthesia experience the ordinary world in quite extraordinary ways. So some people, when they're listening to me speaking now, every word would have its own colour. They might be floating in space as coloured words. Other people, when they're listening to music, might see dancing textures and shapes moving in time with the music. Other people, when they're listening to me speaking, might be feeling an ebb and flow of tastes on their mouth. So maybe the word mouth tastes salty, maybe the word ebb tastes like a sausage sandwich or something like this. So it's a very extraordinary uh, experience. But people with synesthesia have had this uh, for all their lives, so it's perfectly normal to have synesthesia if this is your only way of experiencing the world. And you kind of take for granted your own experiences of the world and you assume that everybody else has them. And it's only when you turn around somebody and say, well, what colour is Monday for you? That you realise, hang on, not everybody thinks that Monday has a colour. Uh, so, so people with synesthesia, we can define this as having an extra experience. It's kind of outside of their control, so they can't switch it on or off in the same as we can't switch our own kind of vision on or off. We can close our eyes, but we, we can't switch it on or off otherwise. Uh, and also they're defined as being kind of consciously experienced uh, percepts. They're a little bit like a percept. And that's how we would think of a definition of synesthesia. So Imogen, you have synesthesia. What exactly do you experience? Well, I have colour graphene synesthesia. So each letter of the alphabet and each number has a specific colour and I can actually see the colours when it's written on a page. So what would the colours be for my name? Well, for Hannah, uh, H is brown, A is red and N is yellow. Um, but because H is the first letter of the word, it appears as more dominant um, to me. So H for me would appear as like a brown sort of word. One way to test for colour graphene synesthesia is to use a colour picker, like the synesthesia battery. This tests the consistency of colour associations. So one of the important things about synesthesia is how science can prove that, that it's real. So one of the ways in which this has been explored is by looking at what happens in the brain when people with synesthesia have these unusual experiences. So some of the studies, for instance, have had people lying in a functional imaging scanner where they're listening to people speaking and they've got their eyes closed so you know, you know that they're not receiving vision via the normal route. Uh, and you can show that when they're listening to people speaking, they're activating a visual part of the brain that's responsible normally for perceiving colour. So in this case, the part of the brain that supports colour vision is being activated by the, the sound of speech rather than from input in the eyes. And this corroborates what people are reporting, that there is some difference there. So is there something different going on in the brain? Or do synesthetes just have a very good memory for associations? So one of the things we know is that there are structural differences in the brains of people who have synesthesia. So they don't have holes or, or damage in their brain. It's not uh, like a neurological condition in that sense. But there are structural differences in their brain. So in fact, the part of the brain that processes colour actually has more grey matter in it. It's physically bigger at the, the millimetre scale in people who have synesthesia. You can also show that the white matter connections, which are the parts of the brain that connects one region to another, also differ in the way that they're organised. But again, there's a tendency in synesthesia for them to be more organised rather than less. Um, so synesthesia can be thought of as an individual difference in the way that the brain is wired and structured, and this gives rise to these unusual ways of experiencing the world. People can also have acquired synesthesia through the use of hallucinogenic drugs such as LSD, which affects the activity of serotonin in the brain and causes visual illusions. One of the things that's been known about synesthesia for a long time is that it runs in families. So this suggests that there's a genetic component to it. One of the things that doesn't run in families are the particular associations themselves. So a mother might think that the letter A is red, but a daughter might think that the letter A is uh, yellow or green, for instance. But this is also important because it could run in fam families simply because the mother has taught the children what the particular associations are. But that disproves uh, that, that that is the case. It's as if each person kind of 
creates their own type of synesthesia. So what the genes are doing is providing a biasing influence that is shaped by other random events or other individual differences in the person's brain. And it's now been shown that in fact that there are genetic differences at the level of the chromosome, but it, we haven't yet found a synesthesia gene. Uh, and the current evidence here suggests that synesthesia might have multiple genes that contribute to produce this particular um, experience in this particular phenotype. Jamie just mentioned that synesthesia runs in families. I wondered, do any of your family members have synesthesia too? Yes, um, my sister actually has the same type, colour graphene synesthesia. And do you have the same colours? No, we completely disagree on the colours. Our synesthetic alphabets are completely different. The University of Sussex is doing research into many areas of synesthesia to help us better understand the condition. So some of the research we're doing at the moment is not just looking at the symptoms of synesthesia, but looking at what happens to your general kind of cognition, your ability if you have synesthesia. So if you have synesthesia, you have these unusual experiences, then the question is, so what? Does this enable you to do things in a different way, in a better way? Does it kind of interfere with your ability to, to do certain things? If anything, we find that synesthesia tends to convey certain advantages. So some of our current research is looking at memory in people who have synesthesia. And we can show that if you, have, um, if you experience words as being coloured, you have better memory for, for lists of words. So just reading aloud a list of words and then kind of clicking your fingers and getting people to kind of recount the list, that they tend to do uh, rather better on that than people who don't have synesthesia. They also tend to uh, remember certain visual patterns as well. So it's not just the case that, that words which trigger colours are better remembered. They seem to have a better visual memory itself. And, and to people with synesthesia, words are a visual stimulus, whereas for other people they're, they're purely auditory or that they're uh, kind of abstract, kind of semantic things. But uh, people with synesthesia experience them concretely and their visual system seems to hold on to things in a better way. So we're interested in exploring what that means. So if you can see music as well as hearing it, what does that mean for your ability to remember a musical piece or reproduce it exactly, for instance, or to interpret the musical piece? Do you do it in a different way? Do you do it in a better way? These are the kinds of questions we're exploring at the moment. All the colours of the words you've seen throughout the episode have been based on Imogen's very own synesthetic alphabet. We hope you've enjoyed the episode and that you've learnt a bit more about what synesthesia is. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. See you again next time. When I see your true colours shining through